Hey y'all, so I just got off of work and I figured there is no better time to explain to y'all my day-to-day -day life in my elementary schools. I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, the number of schools that I have, if I go to one school per day or if I go to a lot of schools per day, what I do when I'm at school, am I a main teacher, am I an assistant teacher? I'm getting all types of those questions and DMs, YouTube video comments. So I just figured I'd address them now. This video specifically will focus on my life in elementary school. I'll do a separate video for junior high school as my responsibilities as a teacher in junior high school are a little bit different than they are in elementary school. However, I also feel like my workload in elementary school is a lot more than it is in junior high school. So this video is gonna be a lot more detailed than my junior high school video will be. I do, however, have to put a disclaimer out there and say that every situation is different. That's actually the JET program motto. And that essentially means that depending on your placement, who you are as a person and your previous experiences with Japan, Japanese and Japanese culture is going to vary depending on where you are placed in Japan. So my current situation and experiences are going to be different from somebody who is placed in Okinawa. Their experiences and situations are gonna be different than somebody placed in Hokkaido. And even people placed within the same prefecture in Japan, their situations can be extremely different from each other. I would even go as far as to say that even the AETs or JETs that are placed in Uji with me, our situations are different because we don't have the same schools. So I just wanted to put that out there and make sure that that was clear and not everybody has the exact same experience. But I've got enough explanation on every situation is different and greeting y'all. So let's just jump into my daily life at elementary school. I am going to start off talking about things that are the exact same or very similar within the JETs or AETs in Uji. So our work time starts at 8.30 in the morning and then we get off of work at 4.30 in the afternoon. That's the same for everybody, no matter who you are, what schools you have, that is the same for everybody in Uji. You are expected to get to work at 8.30, maybe before, and you are expected to leave work at 4.30, maybe after, depending on if you get stuck in a meeting or if something comes up and you're asked to help. Every AET in Uji has three schools. Each of us has one junior high school and two elementary schools. We go to one school per day unless we have kindergarten. And on kindergarten days, what happens is in the morning, we will go to our assigned junior high or elementary school. And then around lunchtime, around 12, maybe one o'clock, we will then go to a kindergarten, one of the three public kindergartens in Uji, and then have a class with those kids for about 30, 45 minutes. We have a meeting with our two supervisors once a month at City Hall. And at those meetings, they give us information relevant to teaching. They'll give us some advice. They will tell us the current situation of the city, um, what they expect from us. And of course, if we need anything from them, they are more than happy to help. I am so grateful for them because I have heard horror stories about people who have had bad BOEs, boards of education, people who have bad experiences with their supervisors. And I'm just grateful that my two supervisors are literally God sent and I have never had a problem with them. They are so eager to help and work throughout any problems that we have and they're just the best. I'm so grateful for them and for being in Uji, like y'all have no idea. Now, the last thing that all of the AETs in Uji have in common is our reimbursement for travel. So some of us have schools that aren't near our apartments or where we live. Under the old system, we only used our bikes to go to school. Unless you couldn't ride a bike or had difficulties riding a bike or weren't comfortable, then that was the only time that you were allowed to use public transportation. But under the old system, most of us rode our bikes. The new system, however, has us going to at least one school that isn't near where we live, so it's hard for us to get there on our bikes. That being said, if you take the train, the bus, or any other form of public transportation, those fees are calculated and then they are then added into your salary for the month. Now I'm going to be getting to the things that are different between the Jets in Uji. And I'll first talk about the old system. And then once I've explained everything about the old system, I'll flip towards the new system and then give an explanation about that as well. So under the old system, we had two elementary schools and one junior high school. And the blocks were set up in a way that the students who would go to your two elementary schools 
most if not all of them would then graduate elementary school and then move on to your junior high school so they wouldn't have to switch their assistant English teacher they would have the same English teacher throughout their experience for the sake of privacy and simplicity I am going to be calling my two old elementary schools K elementary and M elementary now at K elementary I only taught third through sixth grade Yes, sixth grade is considered elementary school in Japan. And under the old system, I went to K elementary twice a week and I only had four classes every time I went. At K elementary, there are only two classes per grade level. So when I would have four classes, that means I would be teaching both classes of one grade and then both classes of another grade. Unless there was some special event or the kids were going on a school trip, I only ever taught third grade through sixth grade. At K Elementary, I only taught first grade, second grade, and the special education classes a handful of times. So those students know me. I'm just not a prominent figure in their education right now, simply because English becomes an official subject in Japan in third grade. So it makes sense as to why I would not go to any grades that were below third grade, simply because I'm an English teacher. Those kids don't learn English. They don't need me. However, like I said before, if the older kids were going on a school trip or if their schedules didn't allow to have English on certain days, then my time would be filled up going to the younger classes in which there is no English curriculum. So after I did my self introduction to the kids, I essentially had free reign to what I wanted to do, teach and if I wanted to play games with them, I could do that as well. And in third and fourth grade, I had a JTE or a Japanese teacher of English who helped me with those classes. And essentially I was an assistant in those classes. The JTE would come up with the lesson plan and go over the lesson plan with me, ask if I had any questions, if I had any suggestions or if anything needed to be changed. And then we would go into class. I had the same experience with my fifth and sixth grade JTE who would before class come to me, explain what the kids were learning and ask me if I had any suggestions or any advice as to how they could teach better. At K Elementary, especially with the 5th and 6th graders, my JTE would ask me to make presentations on life in America. I've done presentations on the food that we eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I've done the educational system in elementary school, uh, what field trips are. I've explained summer camp and what we do during summers. I've explained summer schools. So anything as far as American culture that that specific JTE wants me to make a presentation for, I'm on it. Lunchtime and afternoon break at K Elementary is usually spent in the teacher's office. I love the teachers at that school and any chance that I can get to talk to them and practice my Japanese, the better. The teachers at that school are so nice, they are so friendly and really are patient with me when I'm trying to explain things in Japanese because again, I'm not fluent. All of my students have my heart, so there is no exception between what school they go to and how much love that I get or give them. All of my students have my heart. I will say, however, the kids at K Elementary were a little bit more mild than the kids that were at M Elementary. Now, don't get me wrong, kids are gonna be kids. They have high energy. They're going to ask questions. They're going to do things that you're like, why would you do that? But kids are kids, and who am I to stop a kid from being a kid? If they had a question, I would answer it. If they wanted me to give them a piggyback ride on the playground, I would do that. If they wanted, me to help them with their other homework. I would help them to an extent because again, I'm not fluent in Japanese. One time I had a kid come up to me, a fourth grader I think, and asked me if I could help him with his kanji homework. Sir, I'm an English teacher. I don't know no kanji. But either way, I love all my kids. They have a special place in my heart and I'm really glad that I was able to keep K elementary under the new system. However, M elementary school was a completely different story. At M elementary school, I taught everyone. I taught everyone from first grade to sixth grade. And yes, it was built into my schedule. M elementary school was a slightly bigger school than K elementary. K elementary had two classes per grade level. M elementary has three classes per grade level. So every time that I would go to M elementary school, I had six classes instead of the four that I would have at K elementary. And similar to K elementary, I would go twice a week as well. 
Now, the only classes that I had at JTE in was fifth and sixth grade. Under the old system, and last year specifically, I had the same JTE for fifth and sixth grade, which luckily for me happened to be the same JTE that taught at K Elementary School, the third and fourth graders. So because I only had a JTE for fifth and sixth grade at M Elementary, that meant that I was on my own from first grade to fourth grade. Similar to K Elementary, the kids at M Elementary did not have English as an official subject until third grade. So if you were younger than third grade or part of the special education classes, I could essentially teach you whatever I wanted to teach you. And I did, we learned the months of the year, the days of the week, how to introduce yourself in English and literally anything else. I played games with them, we would run around the gym. It was a really good time. Now, because I did not have a JTE for third and fourth grade at M Elementary, I had to quickly step into the role of being a teacher. Similar to the way that you have one teacher in elementary school in America, they have the same situation in Japan for the most part. So when I would go to teach English to the third and fourth graders at this school, their homeroom teacher was in charge of making the English lesson plan. Again, I was there to help make games, uh, give explanations about certain nuances in English, uh, but third and fourth grade English in Japan is very vocab focused. They learn very short sentences like I like, I don't like, my name is, this is a, and so on and so forth. Nothing too grammar focused yet. However, at M Elementary School, I guess the third and fourth grade teachers saw the potential that I had and just started leaving notes on my desk in the morning, uh, saying that this is the unit that they were on and this is what they wanted to do. Uh, and if I had any extra ideas, I could put them into the schedule. So I would literally get to class, the teacher would literally be like, Onigaishimasu, and then just kind of leave. They wouldn't leave, they're not allowed to do that, I think. But they would be either grading papers in the back of the classroom or helping me manage the class because classroom management is not my job. But even after I got the hang of being in the classroom with the kids and engaging with them, and especially after my Japanese improved from me first coming to Japan and first teaching to, I wanna say about January of 2022, even the notes stopped being put on my desk. The teachers just kind of trusted me to teach them. Uh, and that actually made me feel really special that the teachers at this school saw that I had the drive and the passion and the skills to teach these kids. Like they knew that my classroom management skills were A1. So not to toot my own horn or anything, but I'm tooting my own horn. Similar to K Elementary, at M Elementary, I would talk to the teachers in the teacher's office during lunch. However, during afternoon break, the kids would literally come into the teacher's office and ask if I would go play with them. I had to switch out my indoor shoes for my outdoor shoes, and then I would go out and play with them, have fun with them. Uh, but then April, May, June, and July started to roll around, and I was like, it is too hot for this, and so I hid from the kids. I'm not proud of it, but I did stay cool. With me, I do have the third and fourth grade textbooks that we use in Uji. So this is the third grade textbook. It's called Let's Try One, and it's essentially very basic, basic, basic English. The first two units are very easy. Uh, the kids learn how to introduce themselves and say, hi, my name is. They learn greetings from all around the world. And then unit two asks the question, how are you? So the kids after unit two are able to say, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I'm excited, I'm fine, I'm good, things like that. Then towards the end of the third grade textbook, the kids learn animal names, they learn shapes, they learn colors. And then at the end of the third grade textbook, I'm actually gonna switch to the student version because this one's in color and you can actually see. At the end of the third grade textbook is a story that uses all of the knowledge that the kids should have learned uh, throughout their time learning English in third grade. It's a story about a dog playing hide and seek with his other animal friends. And the dog is going up to his friend saying, are you a, uh, and then the animal answers, yes, I'm a monkey, or yes, I'm a cow. And then the last one is a dragon for some reason. 
Now, the fourth grade textbook is a continuation of the Let's Try series, but this one is Let's Try 2. So similar to the way that the Let's Try 1 is set up, Let's Try 2 also has greetings from around the world, but because the third graders learn how to answer the question, how are you, they don't include that in the fourth grade textbook. They move right on to the days of the week, months of the year, uh, and things like that. By the middle of the book, the kids are learning how to tell time in English, and actually the unit that we're on right now is stationary. So the kids are learning stapler, eraser, pencil, pencil case, marker, magnet, all of that. I don't have the fifth grade textbook with me that we use in Uji, but I do have the sixth grade textbook. The sixth grade textbook is New Horizons 6. The fifth grade textbook is New Horizons 5. And essentially, New Horizons 5 sets the students up for New Horizons 6 in that during the beginning half of the fifth grade textbook, the kids are learning how to do their self-introduction. So, hello, my name is, I am from, I like, I don't like. Uh, fifth graders also learn how to tell directions to people, like the post office is over there. You go straight for one block, turn left, go straight for one block and then turn right. It's there on your right. Those kids know how to say that. And then by the end of the time in fifth grade, the kids can essentially have small conversations in English and understand. Sixth grade builds on the knowledge that the kids learned in fifth grade and expands upon it. So the kids can talk about their summer vacations, they can talk about their day-to-day -day activities. Um, there's also information on different animals that the kids might not have learned in fourth grade or fifth grade, like specific animals like sea turtles and where sea turtles live, different biomes around the world. In sixth grade, the kids also talk about their best memories, and then they learn some past tense verbs. So they know that the past tense of go is went, they know that the past tense of is is was, and so forth and so on. I think they only learn about five or six past tense verbs, because past tense and other difficult grammar points are reserved for junior high school. We also go to kindergarten in Uji. The days that we have kindergarten are the only days that we go to more than one school in a day. So the morning half of the day is reserved for our scheduled school and then around 12, 12.30, we then have to make the commute to the one of three public kindergartens that Uji has. And in kindergarten, similar to the way that we can do whatever we want with first, second, or our special education classes, we can do whatever we want with kindergarten. However, kindergarten lessons only last about 30 to 45 minutes depending on the kindergarten. So usually we play a couple games and then review things that the kids should already know, like some animals, colors, numbers, things that the kids can easily grasp and we can play games with. Each public kindergarten in Uji has their own nuances and things that they do. At one kindergarten, after the students have gone home, the kindergarten teachers will ask the two AETs if they can help them clean the rooms that the students were in for the day. At another kindergarten, after the students have gone home, we'll go back to the staff room in the kindergarten, and then the AETs will ask three questions in English to all of the teachers that are in the staff room, and then the staff room will answer in English. And this is to help the teachers understand more about English and have an opportunity to practice English. And then at the last kindergarten, there are two classes that we teach. So instead of doing one class for 30 to 45 minutes, we'll do one class for 20 minutes, maybe 25, have a short break, some students go home, and then maybe about 10 minutes later, we have another class with less students that's also about 20 minutes. We also only go to kindergarten once or twice a month, depending on how our supervisor sets up our schedule for that month. But yeah, that's everything under the old system. Now the new system. Like I said previously, under the old system, we had two elementary schools, one junior high school. After completing sixth grade, the students at your elementary schools would then go on to your junior high school. That was the block system. Now we have a group system. And essentially the group system was made so that there is an even number of classes of English for each AET in Uji. However, some blocks were big, some blocks were small. Across three schools, one AET only had 29 classes and then another AET would have 69 classes. So the students in the block with the AET that had 69 classes 
had fewer opportunities to see their assistant English teacher than the students that were in the block with 29 classes. So our Board of Education and our supervisors did some evening out and now all of us have about 42 to 45 classes across our three schools. That meant that either one or both of our elementary schools were being switched. In my case, I lost M Elementary School and now I have a new elementary school, O Elementary School. O Elementary School is about a 45 minute commute from my apartment. So I cannot ride my bike, especially because it's up a hill, uh, a mountain as a matter of fact. I have to walk to the station, take the train, and then take a bus to get to my new school. However, similar to M Elementary in the past, when I met with the third and fourth grade teachers at my new elementary school, they asked me whether I felt comfortable being the main teacher or if I just wanted to help with the lessons and assist and just be in the classroom. Because I was confident in my abilities and my previous experiences at M Elementary were extremely positive, I said that I had no problem being the main English teacher for the third and fourth graders. And at my new elementary school, I only teach third and fourth grade. I don't teach first and second, and I don't teach fifth and sixth. It's just third and fourth. I never have a first period. That's just the way that their classes are set up. And there are three classes of fourth grade and then four classes of third grade. So one day I'm only ever teaching one grade level. So if I teach third grade, I'll have four classes. If I teach fourth grade, I'll have three classes and that's it. When I am in those classes, third and fourth grade, I am the main teacher. The homeroom teachers are definitely there to help out. I've never had one leave. Uh, they are there to help with pronunciation practice, classroom management, but there's never really been big distractions or disturbances in class. The students at this school are very well behaved and it has honestly become one of my favorite schools that I teach at. And because I don't teach all the kids at this elementary school. I make an effort to go out during recess and play with the kids. We play dodgeball, we have races, which I always win. And I have the opportunity to talk to the kids in a setting where they don't have to learn English. They're not forced to feel like they have to speak English because I do know a good bit of Japanese. Still not fluent, but I know a good bit of Japanese to converse with them. And the kids are always curious and they're always energetic and it's just a really good time at my new elementary school. I really have enjoyed the month and a half that I've been there. At my new elementary school, I started a thing. I do this thing called mic time. Essentially, mic time is the first five or six minutes of the class that I teach and it's me asking the students four questions. I ask them the date, the day, the weather, and the season. And that's just to get their English warmed up and then after the five or six minutes are up, we review all the questions that I asked and then we move on to the actual content that I want to teach the kids for the day. Before I get into the intricacies of mic time, I want to explain this bag I carry around at my new elementary school. So it just goes over my shoulder, rests on my hip, and it has most if not all of the material that I'm going to use for the day in that class. So when mic time starts, I ask the class, what time is it? And then at this point, they understand that when I ask that question, that means it's mic time. So I'll ask, what time is it? They'll scream, it's mic time. And I'll pull out the mic from my bag and be like, yes, it is now mic time. Then I'll ask them the date, the day, the weather, and the season. And during mic time, I also have cards that have magnets on the back of them that I've created that I stick on the board so the kids can have those sight words. And when the kids see those specific sight words, they're able to understand, oh, that's September. Oh, that's October. So I have these and I have ones for the months of the year, the days of the week, the seasons, the weather. For example, here's the one that I use for October. And then there's a magnet on the back for the board. There's one for October. Here's the one for February. The one for February is missing a magnet. I'm gonna have to find out where that went. Here's the one for April. I also have one for March. I have all of the months printed out, but these are the select few that I brought with me for the weekend. I also have the seasons. So right now with me, I have spring and winter. I also have fall. And then of course I have the days of the week, 
So right now I have Monday and Friday. I also have some weather cards printed out. So when I ask the kids how's the weather, they answer it's snowy, it's sunny, it's windy. So I have snow, rain, wind, cloudy. And then after that, I ask them, how does it feel outside? So they'll be like, is it hot? Is it cold? Does it feel good? So I also have cards for that. They're, if they're like, it feels good, then I'll put the good one on the board. Or recently it's gotten cold in Japan. So they'll be like, it's cold. And I'll be like, good, so it's cold. So I'll put these on the board and then one by one we'll go through and I'll have the kids repeat for pronunciation practice. And that's essentially what mic time is. I write down all of my lesson plans at my new elementary school in this folder and it has every lesson that I've ever done with the kids since I've started going to that new school. Now to make English fun, because I know English might not be everyone's favorite subject, uh, I can't even speak English half the time so there goes my credentials. But in order to make English fun, I try to think about what a third or fourth grader might want to do as far as games or activities. Of course, you have your classic bingo. The kids in Japan go absolutely nuts over bingo. I, I don't know what kind of chokehold bingo has on these kids, but these kids will jump through walls and windows when they get bingo. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. And because I like to play games, I want the kids to be excited and energetic. There are a lot of different games that I play, like I previously mentioned bingo. Uh, we also have the fly swatter game in which I'll put keywords and pictures on the board. I'll get two students at a time. I'll say a keyword. The students then have to slap the fly swatter on the correct term. And then if they are the fastest, then they get a point. I also have four whiteboards that I use if I'm having a student write something. Usually this is for fifth or sixth grade, but I've also used it in third and fourth as well. And I have many, many PowerPoints that I've created that follows the curriculum of the third and fourth grade textbooks. And that is all on this very, very beautiful USB. I most likely will make a video in the future explaining the common games that I play with my students. We play Mario Kart. I have a Mario Kart PowerPoint. We play Jeopardy, as previously mentioned, and we play Bingo. And we've even played Jenga in class, as a class. But it's just the excitement of it, and the kids get really into it, and I just try to do everything that I possibly can to make English fun. As far as other responsibilities that I have, at my junior high school and at my new elementary school, I have introduced the idea of an English board to them. It wasn't my idea, so shout out to Anna for that. Thank you for giving me that idea. So essentially an English board is a place in the school, a cork board or a bulletin board that we can use to practice English phrases. I'll decorate it depending on the season or the month, and it'll have things for each grade level that knows English to read. At my junior high school specifically, because kids can read English at that point, their English is going to be a little bit more difficult than the English that I would use for elementary school. And yeah, that's pretty much my life at elementary schools. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and have a better understanding of what I do as a teacher in elementary school. When the junior high school video comes out, be sure to watch that. And yeah, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed and until then I will see you guys in the next video.